Hi, my name is Akshat Tangsale, and you're watching the pre-lecture video for week 5 of the unit Material Energy Balances. Today I will recap what was covered in week 4 and then look forward to what is coming up in week 5. So let's get into it. So this week we finished chapter 4 which was the fundamentals of material energy balances. This chapter covered firstly the non-reactive mass balance and then reactive mass balance. In non-reactive mass balance we first looked at single unit operation and then multi-unit operation and then likewise in the reactive systems we looked at single unit reaction problem and then multiple unit reaction problem with recycle systems. In particular for reactive energy balance we looked at atom species balance. Remember we always prefer to do either extent of reaction calculation for a single reaction problem or uh, atomic species balance for multiple reaction problem. Combustion reactions are a special type of reactive systems and therefore we look at them in much more detail. So remember when you have combustion reaction of a fuel then carbon goes to carbon dioxide for complete combustion or it can go to carbon monoxide for partial combustion. Likewise hydrogen goes to water after combustion sulfur goes to sulfur dioxide and nitrogen converts to nitrogen dioxide if the temperature is more than 1300 degrees Celsius. When calculating theoretical oxygen required for combustion reaction, we calculate based upon complete combustion of carbon and hydrogen from the starting material. That is a mole balance, atom species mole balance of carbon and hydrogen for complete combustion and then excess amount of oxygen is the amount that is actually fed over and above the required level for theoretical conversion. Theoretical and excess air are the amounts of air provided for the required theoretical and, oxy uh, and excess amount of oxygen. We know in dry air the fraction of oxygen is about 21 percent mole percent and therefore the amount of air will be always moles of oxygen divided by 0.21. Then we looked at chapter 5 which talks about um, calculating specific volumes for liquids as well as for gases. For liquids we look at densities normally which is inverse of specific volume and we found out that specific law volume or density of a liquid cannot be calculated theoretically. It has to be experimentally determined. But for gases we have very good theories for calculating specific volume of a gas. The most applied one and the simplest of these equations is the ideal gas equation of state which defines pressure times volume equals to the number of moles of a gas times the temperature multiplied by the universal gas constant. Now this equation came about because of three assumptions. The ideal gas assumes that the volume of the molecules themselves of the gas is negligible. It also assumes that the collision between molecules in a gas or between gas molecules and the walls of a container are completely elastic and no energy is lost in this collision. And the third assumption in ideal gas law is that the molecules do not have any attractive force between them. But we know when the pressures are very high or when the temperature is very low, then the molecules themselves occupy a significant fraction of the total volume. And the molecules are so close to each other that they have some attractive force between them which we now know as Van der Waals force. So then we started looking at equations which can define non-ideal systems, non-ideal gases. And cubic equations of state is a type of equation which can define the 
behavior of a gas in its gaseous form, vapor form, as well as the liquid form. We will expand that further in week 5 and we will look at other equations of state, but more on that a little bit later. A key assessment for this unit, which is the first assignment, is due next week, that is 29th of August at 5 p.m. So I want to talk to you regarding this assignment. So for the first question of this assignment, which is on a combustion problem, in this problem, because you're dealing with multiple reactions, there is a mixture of various gases in liquefied petroleum gas. You will have three or four different stoichiometric equations. Therefore, I recommend you to do atom species balance and therefore calculate the oxygen requirement based upon atoms of carbon going into carbon dioxide and atoms of hydrogen going into water molecule. For the second problem of the assignment, you will need to draw a process flow diagram followed by a degrees of freedom analysis on each unit of the process as well as the overall unit of the process. Remember, you should start solving your problem where the degrees of freedom are fully specified, which means it could be either at the start of the process in the middle of the process, end of the process, or the overall process. So you must identify a section or overall process where the degrees of freedom are zero. Once you have done your degrees of freedom analysis and you're ready to begin your solution, remember for the reactor part, you cannot assume the components mass to be conserved. So you must do a mole balance or uh, atom species balance on the reactor or you do extent of reaction calculation on the reactor. Once you have done the reactor balance then you can proceed to balances around other units and for all other units because they are not reactive systems you can do total mass balance and a component mass balance because in this case a component mass balance will also be conserved. So good luck with your assignment and if you have more questions, I'll see you during the lectures. Let's look at what coming, what's coming up in lecture in week 5. So next week we will finish chapter 5. Uh, we only have uh, cubic equations of state and compressibility factor equation of state. And once we finish with those, we can move on to chapter 6. So in chapter 6, we start looking at multiple phase systems where either a vapor liquid is in equilibrium or liquid liquid is in equilibrium or vapor solid is in liquid equilibrium. So next week I will only have time to cover the vapor liquid equilibrium which is applied in wide range of problems in industry like distillation, gas absorption and drying evaporation and other vapor liquid systems. So to prepare for week 5, please read chapter 6 of Feldman Rosa textbook and go through the examples 6.3-2 and 6.4-1. And I hope to see you in the lectures. Bye for now.